next Pats podcast is presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. What's up, everybody? Welcome into the next Pats podcast. I'm Phil Perry. We've got another edition of our legendary scouting episodes of Next Pats here, where we're talking to former Patriots. We're trying to figure out what is most important at their positions. What is it that Bill Belichick is looking for if he's looking to fill that position in the draft? We're just a few days away now from the first round of the draft. I find these conversations to be really enlightening. We already spoke to Devin McCourty about corners and safeties. What might New England be looking for there? We talked to Rob Ninkovich about edge defenders, different body types there. What does he prefer? What does he think that the Patriots think is most valuable at that position? And then we're pulling some names from this year's draft class, and we're trying to marry them up with the analyses that we're getting from these players. Well, today we've got another Patriots legend on with us here on Next Pats. It's James White, friend of the podcast. You know him, you love him. He's got all kinds of insight and intel on what it takes to play the quote unquote sub back role in New England. He obviously excelled in that pass catching role on third down, but he could do a little bit of everything. And we're going to talk about why that matters at this position. But without further ado, let's get right into it with our guy, James White. All right, there he is. There's James White. James, thanks so much for being with us here on Next Pats again, man. Great to have you. Appreciate you having me, Phil. So we want to continue our series here. That we're this is like our legendary scouting series, is what I want to call this. You're you're too young to be called a legend, but you're you're kind of a legend. That's all right. So we're just gonna slap that label on it here. Uh, we've heard from Devin McCordy, we've heard from Rob Nikovich, uh, two of your old teammates about their positions and what the Patriots might look for in those spots, especially again as we're we're looking ahead toward the draft here. So I wanted to talk to you about that sub back role, that pass catching back role uh, that you obviously excelled in for a long time here. It still looks like uh, they're looking for the next James White, James. So uh, wanted to put it to you. If there are two or three qualities that you think are, are maybe most important to have in that job, what do you think you, they are that Bill Belichick is looking for? I think you have to be smart first and foremost, be able to pick up the blitzes, read coverages, you know, be able to, you know, take the adjustments from the quarterback, the offensive line, and just be able to go out there and just react, not and not really think out there. Second, you have to be tough because most of the time, sub backs, you're probably smaller, typically smaller than the guys you're going to be blocking. So you got to be tough enough to go in there, put stick your, your face in there, block the guys who run a thousand miles an hour trying to get to the quarterback. And then I, I think versatile, I think that's, that's an, a key thing as well, because based on the teams that we would match up against, sometimes the sub back is the guy who's going to be running the ball a little bit more if they're going to play a lighter box with you in the game. And sometimes you're going to get that mismatch if they have a big linebacker covering you. So I think versatility is very key when it comes to that, too. That's a that's a key point I think you make right there, because we don't we don't think of your position in that way you know we think of the the pass protection yeah. <laughs> and the receiving part of it but if they load the field with you know 60 b 70 b's at times today in the in the modern game you know you, okay well we got to run it now go go ahead between the tackles there james or you know whoever <laughs> it is right so so you do have to be able to do a little bit of both even if you you do sort of 90 percent of the time do this yeah. other role yeah you got to be able to do both and i, I mean every running back coming to the nfl Obviously, I think everybody's a, a gifted runner. And obviously, it could be different schemes that fit you a little bit better and whatnot. But when it comes to the sub back thing, I feel like most guys coming from college weren't sub backs. You were the guy probably running the ball 90% of the time. I know some, sometimes kind of now there's guys who are pass catchers, a little bit like the guy Jameer Gibbs from, from Alabama. He's a little bit more of a pass catcher. It seems like he's kind of already got like that one step into the league, you know, being coached under Bill O'Brien running a sort of NFL type offense, but it's, it's fun to watch these guys. And I think you got to be interchangeable. And I know something that Bill Belichick preaches all the time, the more you can do the better. And if you're a sub back who can block catch and run, it's a, it's an added bonus. And it's tough for defenses to scheme up against guys like that, because I know for myself, you know, like when I come into the game, I'm sure like I can hear it when I run into the game, like 28 in, 28 in. So like they know when I come in, it's probably you know, probably 90% chance pass. So like a screen or <laughs> so there's, there's different types of ways that you know guys really have to scheme for those sub backs. It's, it's tough. You mentioned a name there, Jameer Gibbs, who we've you know looked at 
quite a bit leading up to the draft here. You know, he comes from Alabama, so we got to be familiar with all those Alabama guys because of that connection with Nick Saban. But he he does. He looks like sort of a, a prototypical sub back. He's got elite speed, James. Mm-hmm. He's like in the four threes in terms of his 40. And so obviously that uh, allows him to bring a, a certain element to the game. But for that position here in New England, how much does pure speed matter? I don't think it necessarily matters, but it could definitely be a difference maker. I know I I didn't necessarily have that or, you know, many of the guys in the room that I was with weren't, we weren't really blazers, but I think we were fast guys. just not like the four, three type, guys, but he, he has a thing that sets him apart and he's fast. But typically we think about those fast guys are not really elusive, but he is, and he's light on his feet. He has good balance. And, you know, I never really, you know, now that you say that now, you know, now that Bill O'Brien's there, he coached him at Alabama. I mean, obviously we're at pick 14. I don't know if he goes in the first round. I don't know if they pick him that high, but if they trade back and a guy like B. John Robinson goes before him and, you know, everybody's kind of slotted him to be like that second guy off the board. I, I can see that happening when this is just based off the connection and, you know, familiar, familiarity is very key for sure when it comes to office of coordinators. And, you know, they've spent, Bill Belichick has spent a, an, an early pick, a second round pick on a, on a sub back before and Shane Vereen, mm-hmm. you know, you were fourth round pick, but you know, he's, he's shown that he, he really values uh, that position and, and what you guys can, can bring to an offense. And you mentioned the familiarity part of it. I think that would be key because of something you mentioned earlier. Sometimes it's hard to tell, I think for college players at that position, whether or not they can actually pass protect, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> how they're usually getting the ball or they're running a route, right? Like how often are they just actually sitting there? How often in, co- in college football in general, are you, are you max protecting and you're leaving the back in there to, to pick up a blitzer? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I know there's a lot of throwing in the college game. I just don't know how often these guys are doing it. So maybe Bill O'Brien would be able to, you know, share that sort of intel. Hey, this guy's, we didn't do it a ton, but he's, he's at least willing to stick his nose in there. How much of it is, is just a willingness to be able to do it, James, whether or not you're actually polished <laughs> yeah. as a pass protector or not. It's probably 95% willingness to actually go out there and do it. I think every running back is capable of doing it. It's just, are you willing to take on a guy? You're, I mean, you're essentially almost standing still in a sense, and then kind of have to eject yourself into somebody who's running downhill on you. But it's, like I said, I think it's 95% will and the want to, and I think everybody's capable of doing it. I mean, I myself, I was, I was a really good pass protector in college, but when I got to the NFL, like my first year, I still kind of struggled a little bit right away because it's, it's a little bit different. You know, the protection scheme that you run in college may be different than the ones that you run in the NFL, maybe a lot more adjustments just based off how the defense lines up. I mean, just based on the defensive formation, it may be something that has to go off in your brain and think fast, the ball snap, this guy's lined up here, I got to check this side, check back. So, so, so there's there's so much that goes into it. And then, and then after all that, there's a guy running full speed at you and you got to protect, you know. Tom Brady, Mac Jones, you can't, can't get the franchise. It's not like college. You can't get the franchise quarterback they're paying. I mean, Mac's still in his rookie deal, but you can't get a $40 million guy, you know, hit in the face. And even though the rules are a little bit different now, you can't really hit the guys in the face. He's well protected, but it's it's a tough position to be in. And it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, step in as a rookie young running back to right away. I know you have to build that trust, especially with Bill Belichick. He wants to see you go out there and do it in practice, the preseason games, regular season games, in order for you to go out there and protect the quarterback on third down, especially. I'll never forget my first year covering the team. Uh, it was 2011, and Danny Woodhead is is on the team. And he's he was sort of, you know, do a little bit of everything for them. Mm-hmm. He, would, he would catch it, uh, but they would run it between the tackles with him. But he had to pass protect, too. And I remember writing a story about him and pass protection. And, you know, how hard is that, Danny? You see how big these guys are out here? And Danny, of course, is, you know, he's five foot yeah, seven, seven, probably. Yeah, it's, you know, 190 pounds. Right, exactly. So uh, it's a tough, tough gig. Um, and, and I I, I understand Bill Belichick wanting to establish that, that trust with players who are going to be taking on that role. And I wonder, James, you know, you and he's, you know, Bill has openly talked a lot about this. You've, you've spoken about it in the past about how you really didn't play all that mm-hmm. much your rookie year. Did it take you that that full first year to to be able to establish that trust with Bill? You you did it in college, so you had some experience yeah. doing it, and you, it sounds like you were pretty confident in that role as a pass protector. But it, did it take the full year for you to be able to to show Bill in a way, hey, I can do this? 
Yeah, I think it, it definitely did, obviously, because I, I didn't play. So I don't think they quite trusted me just yet to throw me out there on the field, even after, you know, Steven really tore his ACL. I thought I was going to have an opportunity to go out there and play after that. I still didn't really. I only played it in three games. So obviously there was a lack of trust in that sense. So coming to that next offseason, I know during OTAs, you kind of meet with your coaches and they talk about what things they're kind of looking for you to improve on. And obviously pass protection was a big thing that Ivan Fears preached to me. So kind of have to take it, take it to heart, take it with a grain of salt and go out there and show them what you can do. And I think, you know, from even before you put the pads on from OTAs, for me, it was never really the knowing who to pick up. That was, that was easy for me. It's just actually going out there, going out there, protecting the guy. I think that's the hardest part. I mean, obviously, Figuring out the schemes and all that, that's difficult too. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, you still got to block that guy who's coming down in front of you. So it, did, it took me a while to, to build that trust. But I think, you know, once I, you know, got that trust for me, it became easy after that. Do you think you need to have a certain amount of – this is like a, a pretty basic question. You may laugh at me, but do you need to be like at a certain weight? or so? Is there is there a certain size threshold you think you need to 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 check in terms of – you know, a box on the checklist, James, in order to be able to do that job. I mean, these guys are, I know the linebackers are getting smaller. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot smaller, That's like 225. <laughs> so, so maybe, you know, you know, Jameer Gibbs, for instance, um, you know, I think I had it in my proto, I have this prototypical Patriots series that I do every year before the draft. And I'm pretty sure it's still true that Bill has never drafted a running back who weighs less than 200 pounds. And Jameer Gibbs is just under the mark. He checked out. I think he was 199 at the combine. I said, you know, I think it'd be yeah, willing to make an exception. Yeah, there. yeah. But you're you know, running four three, you make an exception. Exactly. <laughs> but is there is there like a, a low bar that you have to meet in your opinion? Not at all. I mean, like I said it's all about having that will to do it and just using the right technique. Especially for a smaller guy, I think it's sometimes a little bit easier because and the guys just think they're going to run you over. So you, you really just got to stick your face, get that initial blow, and then kind of hold on to the guy in a sense. So there's different ways that different guys, you know, like to block. But like I said it's that want to at the end of the day. It's, it's no no matter if you're – there's guys – I know guys who are 240 pounds, not great pass protection. Obviously, if they get their hands on you, it's over. But <laughs> by the end of the day, a lot of the times, it's usually the smaller backs are the guys that are usually protecting the quarterback. So that goes to show you – that doesn't necessarily matter about how you know big a guy is in a sense. It's just all about technique and the want to. That's really interesting. The last thing I want to ask you, James, is just about the receiving part of it. And you mentioned you don't necessarily need to be a burner, but you know when I think of you or I think of Shane Vereen or Kevin Falk, you know you guys all could separate. So mm-hmm. how important to you is the ability to to just change direction? You know, for us this time of year. Uh, we're not able to watch every game of all of these prospects. Yeah, it's too much. It's yeah. <laughs> but what we can do, which makes, you know, life a little bit easier for us. And I think for teams too, it's why they do this stuff is you can, you can see a number in a, in a shuttle drill or in mm-hmm. a three cone drill and say, okay, that guy, you know, it might look a little different when the pads are on, but this number would indicate that this guy changes direction pretty well, that he's got some, some quickness to him. How important is is that physical skill set to be able to do your job? Or is it not important at all? Can guys create separation in maybe some different ways? I think guys could create separation in many different ways. And I think getting with the right coaches, giving you techniques, there's it's a lot of different ways to do it. And I think it's just having a, a good feel for the game. Myself, I like I feel like I have great change of direction skills, but my my uh, shuttle times and all that probably didn't quite show that not necessarily, but for myself, I feel like I have great deception when it comes to my routes, having a good feel of, you know, making guys miss or just having a great understanding of, you know, what the quarterback's looking for and zone coverage, reading the coverage out, getting my head around. There's just this small different types of things. I don't think you have to be, you know, physically gifted or the fastest or quickest person. I think you just have to have a good feel, know how to run routes. And there's, just different ways to do it. And I said, especially if you get with the right coaching staff, I mean, for myself, you know, being with Josh McDaniels, obviously he coached a lot of great third down backs, Kevin Falk, Shane Vereen, you know, Danny Woodhead, all those guys. And being able to see how, I mean, we all probably did it slightly differently. And every, every single person is going to run routes. You can have six guys in the room. You can teach them, you know, show them how I run a route, but we're still at the same time going to run the route completely different because we don't run the same we don't cut the same so i think everybody kind of has to work you know kind of find what works for them and 
that's pretty much how it goes. Because even for myself, I know, like even like Ramondre, people don't think he's necessarily the quickest person, but he's he actually has great deception when it comes to making guys miss and running routes. And I know when he first got there, it wasn't probably you guys would have never saw him catch the ball as much as he does now, but he's worked at it. He knows how to make guys miss. And you just got to have a good feel for the game. And I know when I first got there as a rookie, like I, I was confident in running routes, but I, I just did things way too fast. I just, I just rushed everything. So it's just, just having that good feel, knowing when to be fast, knowing when to slow down a little bit to read the coverage. Cause at the end of the day, if you rush everything, you're probably not going to be at the right depth. You're not going to, you know, be quite open. Maybe the quarterback's not looking at you just yet because you're the last read. This is, Got a lot of stuff that goes into <laughs> That's really interesting. You know, we never, uh, listen, I'll speak for myself. I ne- never think of all of those different elements <laughs> that that go into it, but they're all things that you have to account for. Understand it. You know, one of the first things you mentioned is, is the ability to, you have to be smart because you have to understand the protections and what your assignment is there, but you also have to be able to read coverages, you know, which is something we think about a lot with receivers in the Patriots offense, but I don't think people necessarily associate that, that yeah. skill with running backs too, but that's something that clearly you guys had to do. And then you have to use the word that I'll use that, that it felt like you were describing there is, is savvy, right? You don't necessarily have to be the quickest guy in the world, but you can do certain things to get open Hmm. uh, that can allow you to be a successful receiver, even if, and I got your combine numbers right here, James, (laughs) listen, you, you might've sold yourself a little short. You're above average, man. When it comes to the change of direction stuff, you were almost seven second flat three cone. And then you're a four, two, short shuttle which was 61st percentile in the the history of the combines so, you know 20 ish not the history but the last 20 years i should say yeah. of the combine 61st percentile so you're above average you're above yeah, average yeah, when it came to yeah. the quickness <laughs> but, said, but even still like i feel like my numbers weren't the greatest out of our probably like the running back class and i feel like in my opinion i make guys miss more than some of those guys that probably ran a quicker shuttle or something like that but i think what you said savvy is definitely key everybody's gonna do it you know, kind of a different way. And, you know, some guys may be a better route runner by, you know, you know, being physical in the routes. I mean, maybe a guy like myself, I don't want a guy to touch me at all. So I'm going to, you know, make a miss completely. Or there can be times where you go up against a more physical linebacker where he's he's going to get his hands on. I mean, you got to be a little bit more physical. So there's different techniques you learn from your coaches and find ways to get open and based on the guys that you're being matched up against. And when it comes to the reading coverage thing it's not as complex like for a running back as it is for you know a receiver having to read like split safety coverage and all that but just having an understanding knowing the team that you're going up against you know if this linebacker drops off there's probably going to be a guy in the flat you just sit here or based on the route concept if you know it's his own coverage they want you to tuck it tight versus the linebacker so he grabs you and the end cup comes in behind you based on the concept it's just having a good understanding of the game and I think you just got to learn the game from all different aspects, not just from the running back position. I think that's what kind of helped me out a lot, just understanding the whole concept of what we're trying to get down on the play, not just, you know, not just get open for myself every single time. <laughs> is, is that the kind of stuff they would try to test you on to see if you you would understand those, you know, those route concepts, how they work together uh, before the draft? I don't know how much you remember that now. That was back in 2014, so we're almost – Man, I can't believe that. We're almost 10 years. <laughs> yes. Almost 10 years. Lies, from now, man. man. <laughs> getting old, buddy. Yeah, getting old. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do you do you remember what so any of those pre-draft meetings were like? Maybe <laughs> is that what they tried to gauge? Because I'm sure that's that's tough about uh, you know, your position is is probably, I would think, a pretty tough one to scout. Yeah, not not for running back. I wouldn't say they really quiz you on route concepts. It's just more of the protections and run plays, run blocking schemes that you ran in college. They didn't really too much go into I think the biggest key they want to see if you understand the protection scheme that you ran to college and maybe see how they connect with their team is running in a sense. So got it. Wasn't wasn't too much of route concepts. Last thing I'll ask you, James. Put your GM hat on. I know you follow this team closely <laughs> still. What would you be doing in in the first round here? We talk about it feels like the same positions over and over. And and <laughs> hey, maybe you'd say running back. Maybe you'd say B. John Robinson, go and get that guy, have that one-two punch with uh with Ramondre Stevenson, but we seem to talk about all the time, corners, receivers, tackles, really. It, it feels like that's kind of where we've, we've settled for the most part um, when it comes to the first round conversation. But I would love to know what you think after, you know, watching this offense, especially and knowing it the way you do, 
uh, what could they what could they use? What should they be trying to do to to fill whatever needs they have early in the draft here? On the offensive side of things, it's tough. I feel like the two positions for me would have to be either tackle or receiver, in my opinion. I feel like you have good depth at running back, you really have good depth. Even though I, still, I think they have good depth at receiver as well, but just adding a, a younger guy in there, you can kind of mold, you know, kind of fill in that role that, you know, Jacoby left behind right there. I think offensive line is still solid, but just to have, you know, a young guy in there that can maybe play right away or just kind of sit back and learn and be a, a great player for him. But I, I feel like, you know, Bill's a defensive coach. I feel like that first round pick is going to be on a defensive player. I feel like it's going to be a corner or a linebacker, in my opinion, that they may need to find another guy to play alongside Bentley. Ooh, that would be really interesting <laughs> because they haven't really used it. You know, Hightower, they drafted in the yeah. first round years and years ago <laughs> back in 2012. But it's been a while since they've used a really early pick at that position. Yeah, it's been Bentley and Jelani Tavai and, you know, they had – Kyle Van Noy for for years, obviously, and they they acquired him uh, via trade. So that would be really interesting if they went linebacker because it's not. It doesn't sound like at least James the the strongest you know yeah, true linebacker off the ball class. linebacker class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But corner, I think they I think they love the some of the corners that are. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah like, there's quite a few guys like Witherspoon, Gonzalez, mm-hmm. and then Joe. I like Joey Porter too. I like him. Penn some State. big 10 guys some big yeah. 10 that might that feels like it's got to hurt your heart a little bit to throw out a penn state guy and an, and an illinois guy back to yeah. back there like that no I'm, I'm i'm far removed so i'm no harm no foul you know uh, you're a professional <laughs> analyst now that's what you are you're a media guy you're one of yeah. us man yeah you gotta play it even man you're right, exactly, exactly well james white thank you so much for sharing some insight here man this has been great you're teaching me a lot you teach uh, you've teached you've taught i could use a little bit of no, instruction when it comes to the english language clearly <laughs> we, we all do that <laughs> you, you've taught you've taught us all a lot so we appreciate it man thanks for being on with us no problem thanks for having me great stuff there from james just to lay out some of the characteristics that he's talking about at this position that matter most he starts with intelligence you have to be smart you have to be able to understand what you're doing when it comes to blitz pickup understanding defensive coverages and how that might change what you're doing as a pass catcher, you have to be able to follow along with all the adjustments that are being made, whether it's in terms of route running or protection schemes themselves. When you're at the line of scrimmage, you have to be tough in order to be able to pass protect because you're typically going to be an undersized guy. If you're one of these third down backs, you have to be versatile because you have to be able to run it. If the team dares you to run it on the other side of the line of scrimmage and you have to be savvy. That was my word, but I I sort of wanted to distill what he was telling us in terms of being able to create separation for yourself and boil it down to, to one trait because the way he explained it doesn't necessarily come down to quickness or change of direction, even though Patriots running backs past have been able to do that, whether it was James or Shane Vereen or Kevin Falk or Dion Lewis or Danny Woodhead, those guys were extraordinary in my opinion when it came to changing direction, but you can free yourself up, free yourself, excuse me, up in some other ways as well. So let's call it route running savvy. Okay. So who in this 2023 NFL draft class fits all of those characteristics, smart, tough, versatile, has some route running savvy as well. We're going to go to a name that actually didn't make our prototypical Patriots list initially. Although now after having this conversation with James, He's going to find his way in there. And I, this is just sort of a total oversight on my part because athletically and size-wise, he belongs. And it's, believe it or not, another Oklahoma running back, Eric Gray. Now, Gray was not Ramondre Stevenson's teammate at Oklahoma. He started his college career at Tennessee, was there in 2019 and 2020. After that COVID year of 2020, he ends up transferring to Oklahoma And he ends up having a big impact as a do-it-all kind of back. The last two years for Oklahoma, he ended up with 56 receptions. Last year, he ended up rushing for over 1,300 yards, over six yards per carry, 11 rushing scores. So this guy is an accomplished runner, an accomplished receiver, definitely gets to that versatility piece that James White is talking about. He is tough enough based on everything that you read about him in terms of his willingness to be able to pick up blitzers. And if we go back to the beast, which we've been doing during this series where we've been talking to these players and, and trying to find scouting reports that, that fit the descriptions that we're getting from these guys, you know, you go to the beast, Dane Brugler, best in the business at the athletic, 
and you look up Eric Gray and what he was able to do, and you look up the strengths section that Brugler put together on Gray, and this is what he says in terms of his blocking ability, not shy sticking his face in and picking up blitzers as a blocker. If about 90% of being a capable pass protector is the willingness to do it, Eric Gray has that. Now, is he is he perfect? No, because Brugler goes on to write in the weaknesses section that Gray flashes feistiness as a pass blocker. Okay, that's good, right? But his smaller frame will limit his success rate for his NFL size. Now, we might be able to push back on that because his frame is almost identical to the frame that James White brought to the table back in 2014 as a Patriots draft pick. 5'9", 205 pounds at his pro day. That's almost identical to what White was. Ran a 4'6'40", that's usually right around what the Patriots are looking for, whether it's big backs or sub backs in terms of their straight line speed. 37 and a half inch vertical. That indicates he has some real explosiveness to him. And then the number that I think is really indicative of the success that he might be able to have as a route runner on top of the success he had as a receiver in college, 99 catches total. He had 30 catches in his second season at Tennessee. So, you know, he can do it is he ran a four, one short shuttle four, one Oh short shuttle at his pro day. That four, one short shuttle time is a full 10th of a second faster than what Danny Woodhead, for instance, did back in 2008 out of Shadron State. But it, that's that's excellent, excellent, excellent quickness. And so uh, he clearly has enough in the way of pass-catching ability to put up the numbers that he did, but he has the physical skill set where it looks like he'll be able to uh, be an accomplished route runner at the next level as well. And that's exactly what Lance Zerline says on NFL.com and his profile on Eric Gray. Effective route runner with soft hands, also willing to step into contact with downhill blitzers. So there's that toughness portion of it as well. And the ability to pass protect that, that clearly, clearly matters in new England. Eric Gray has that now, just how smart is he to be able to make these adjustments that James White is talking about? Uh, you know, I think this is a, a really difficult piece for us to be able to put together really at any position, whether it's Seth McCourty talking about, um, having the understanding to play multiple roles in the secondary or Rob Ninkovich doing the same, you know, first thing that he started with when he was talking about edge defenders in new England, you have to have what Bill Belichick wants from the shoulders up. He's not just going to wind you up and let you go. You have to make adjustments. You have to understand what the entire defense is doing. So that's generally speaking, what the Patriots want are intelligent players hard for us to figure out because we're not meeting with them. We're not talking to them. We're not talking to all of their coaches. Um, you know, we're talking to scouts, we're talking to front office people and different evaluators who can give us a sense for those things sometimes. You know, Jonathan Mingo, for instance, is somebody who I was told came off as a really intelligent football player at the combine this year. And it's why um, one offensive evaluator singled him out as a potential Patriots fit at that position after the combine, which we spoke about in an earlier episode this offseason. But we can do some digging in terms of player history. And we can find things like this that suggest that Eric Gray has plenty in terms of off the field intelligence that you can go to his bio uh, on Soonersports.com, his Oklahoma bio. He, he served as a middle school math tutor. He was a three, five GPA in high school. He majored in kinesiology at Tennessee. Uh, he's already graduated with his multidisciplinary studies degree from Oklahoma. Uh, when he was at Tennessee, he was a first year SEC academic honor roll guy. So He's got he's got plenty going for himself off the field. He was actually one of three recipients of Oklahoma's coveted Don Key Award, which is presented to players for excellence on and off the field. So this is somebody that I think you could trust to, to do things the right way, the way that the Patriots want you to do them off the field, to be on top of your studies, to be on top of the playbook, uh, ask the right questions in meetings. That's what Eric Gray seems to be as a player. So smart, tough, versatile, has some route running savvy, has some route running quickness on top of it. Although James White says it's not necessarily what you need. You run the short shuttle that he did. You have some pretty special physical gifts. So that's it. We're going to go with Eric Gray as our selection for this particular exercise. We're talking to these Patriots legends and trying to dig down on what Bill Belichick, excuse me, will be looking for at that position. All right, thanks so much to James White. Thanks so much to all of you for listening to this edition of the Next Pats podcast. Again, we're going to have 
another, hopefully one or two of these and look at some different positions as we get closer to the draft. But we really appreciate you sticking it out, consuming this content. We've got all kinds of podcasts coming your way this week, uh, both Next Pats and Patriots Talk. So keep an eye out for all of those. We appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you very soon.